I don't know for a fact that doctor's offices pick the employee with the thickest accent to come out into the waiting room and announce the next patient. <laughs> she doesn't look like she has an accent. I don't know for a fact that Gary Johnson has Gary Johnson tattooed on his arm. <laughs> In case he can't name himself, I just know it's true. I don't know for a fact that my Uber driver's name isn't really Kevin. <laughs> I just know it's true. I don't know for a fact that Trump's taco bowl is 38% spit. I just know it's true. It's interesting that uh, five that I count so far, very conservative newspapers who have not supported, endorsed a Democrat for a long time, the Arizona Republic since 1896, Cincinnati Inquirer 1916, Dallas Morning News 1940, the Houston Chronicle, the San Diego Union Tribune, never support the Democrat. They are doing it. Magaz USA Today yeah. has never endorsed, they still don't, but they said, don't vote for this one. Right. Uh, and then magazines, Rolling Stone, The Advocate, Wired have come out for Hillary. Wow. Uh, Rolling so, Stone, who would have ever thought that? Uh, okay. <laughs> but here, but just, show that, just to show that the equal time, there are some lesser known magazines that have come out for Donald Trump. Would you like to see? <laughs> some lesser known. Lesser known. Uh, for example, for Donald Trump, car and liar. Uh, they say Mr. Trump owns lots of cars and he lies his ass off. What's not to lie? Uh, unpopular science is for Donald Trump. <laughs> Uh, they rave, you can make up practically anything about climate change, and this shithead will retweet it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Trump is the obvious choice. Uh, wine aficionado. I love that. That's my favorite. They say, you don't see this many bitches at the dog show. <laughs> American sociopath. <laughs> uh, their endorsement reads, while we can't sense or process normal human emotion, something about this Trump family just feels right. <laughs> uh, Good Housekeeper magazine. Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We hardly endorse Senor Trump, because if we don't, he'll have us deported. Oh, no. um, Modern Mail Order Bride magazine. Oh. Uh, Ouch. <laughs> they say, we've done business with this man and the check cleared. Uh, this magazine translates as highlights for child laborers. And they say, we support the orange American whose, <laughs> whose name we sew on the neckties. <laughs> uh, and uh, finally, so uh, Ferret Fancy Magazine says, what's in his head doesn't make him one of us, but what's on his head most certainly does. All right. And finally, new rule, and this one's for Trump voters. If you think you hate the establishment now, wait until he wins. And the Trump surrogates, that basket of inexplicables <laughs> he sends out every day to speak for him, become the establishment. Wait until Steve Cortez and Katrina Pearson and Chris Christie and Amarosa are trundling down the corridors of power, bumping into the walls. Mm. We're thinking of giving these people the reins of power. I wouldn't put them on the bus without asking the driver to make sure they don't miss their stop. <laughs> <laughs> so in examining all of Donald Trump's surrogates, it's very helpful to remember that Trump actually once said this. <clears throat> Always be around unsuccessful people because everybody will respect you. Do you understand that? Well, it does explain Rudy Giuliani. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely.
Rudy Giuliani, who claims America never had a problem with terror attacks until Obama came along. Mm -hmm. Really? You can't even think of one? <laughs> I'll give you a hint, Rudy. You make your living off of it. Donald Trump also once said, sometimes people will come into my office and they'll look great, sound great, dress beautifully. Everything is great. Then after you hire them, they turn out to be morons. Which explains his sons, Uday and Kuse. I mean, Trump Sr. in the White House is bad enough without these two American psychos putting putting plastic over the furniture so they can axe murder prostitutes while discussing Phil Collins. <laughs> and how about the non-professionals? Have you seen Pastor Mark Burns? Oh, He's the pastor who gave the benediction at the Republican convention. And I'm not saying he's a total charlatan. It's possible that the free vial of holy oil available from his website can cure the sick. <laughs> And if not, you can always use it as righteous lube. But, <laughs> but he does seem to have lied about everything. Yes. Again, the bio that's on your website claims that you, you earned a, a Bachelor of Science degree. <laughs> Did you make that claim? I asked you just a moment ago as we were just opening up this, and first of all, I said that we were off the record. I didn't okay. agree to that. Yeah, but I did. I did. Yeah, you did you catch did. that? The interviewer says, I didn't agree this was off the record, and he says, yeah, but I did. Right. <laughs> no. What do you think for him? Head. Secretary of State, maybe? Uh, <laughs> head of NASA, perhaps? <laughs> Another familiar face on CNN for the Trump campaign is Margot Gutierrez, a leader of Trump's Hispanic Advisory Council, and quite a spokesman for his peeps he is. He once said, my culture is very dominant culture, and it's causing problems. If you don't do something about it, you're going to have a taco truck on every corner. Okay, first of all, would that be such a bad thing? <laughs> You mean, when I'm drunk, I don't have to wander around L.A. looking for a taco truck? That's the best argument for Hillary I've heard yet. But, but beyond that, Mr. Gutierrez is a real estate scam artist who's filed for bankruptcy 14 times. He's not just a Latino for Trump. He's a Latino Trump. <laughs> Then there's uh, oh, a little Kaylee McEnany, a kind of Ann Coulter without the empathy. <laughs> and another young woman defending Trump, campaign spokesman, someone's crazy ex-girlfriend. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean Katrina Pearson, who wears a necklace made out of bullets from the Chanel Don't Tread On Me collection. <laughs> And once defended it by tweeting, maybe I'll wear a fetus next time. Ugh. About <laughs> good point. about Trump's proposed Muslim ban, she said. You know what? So what? They're Muslim. <laughs> and in 2012, she tweeted, perfect. Obama's dad, born in Africa. Mitt Romney's dad, born in Mexico. Any pure breeds left? Sick. Sick. Pure breeds? Where do you study your talking points? By the light from a burning cross? <laughs> Absolutely. She also blames Obama for launching the war in Afghanistan, even though it was four years before he was even in the Senate, <laughs> and has said about nuclear weapons, what good is having them if you're not going to use them? If this were the $100,000 pyramid, I'd say things a mental patient says. <laughs> So what do you think, ambassador of the UN for her? <laughs> but I have to say that of all the surrogates, my favorite has to be Mr. Michael Cohen. Just, just okay. take a look at him in action <laughs> on CNN. But you guys are down, and it makes Says sense who? that there would... Says who? Most of them. All of them? <laughs> Says who? Polls. I just told you, I answered your question. Okay. Which polls? All of them. Okay. <laughs> so good. So good. I want to see 
shirt. Says who? <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> and he's a lawyer. In fact, he's the head lawyer at the Trump Organization. So we know he's awfully busy with lawsuits right. like the one Trump filed against me in 2013. Remember that lawsuit? Okay. A lot of people remember it as a defamation, defamation suit. It wasn't. He was suing me to collect $5 million because I offered that to him if he could prove that his mother didn't, in fact, fuck an ape. <laughs> So he went into court. This happened. He went into court and produced his birth certificate as if it was going to say orangutan on it. Yes, I made Donald Trump produce his birth certificate, and I'm very proud of that. Very proud of that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not being fair. He does have one other news source. All I know is what's on the internet. <laughs> Me too. I get my news from Pornhub. No wonder he once said, I love the poorly educated. John McCain and Bob Dole, both veterans, but war does things to a man. Both were accused of being too angry, too angry to be president. After all, Bob Dole once said this. And Senator Dole, is there anything you'd like to say to the vice president? Yeah, stop lying about my record. Lunatic. <laughs> but this is okay. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, what about that? <laughs> Obama once just compared his poor bowling skills to the Special Olympics, cut to the apology tour, but we're good with this. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh. <laughs> and finally, the ultimate third rail insulting the military. Obama got endless shit for once saluting with coffee in his hand, violating an ancient military rule dating to never. <laughs> <laughs> but Trump can say John McCain isn't a war hero? If Hillary said that, they'd be burning pantsuits in effigy. <laughs> Uh, now, back in May, we showed you this Us magazine, 25 Things You Don't Know About. You all read these. You know, I, I, this is, I did one of these once. All people in show business have been subject to this. You do 25 Things You Don't Know About Me. And we showed you that Hillary, oh, some of the things are fascinating. Like she said, Bill Clinton proposed to me twice before I said yes. <laughs> and that wasn't even about marriage. <laughs> no. Uh, she said... <laughs> Number 13, I am always <laughs> and will be a Beatles fan. I also really love Adele because, of course, I'm not pandering to millennials at all when I say that. Uh, so then we did the Ted Cruz edition. We said they should do Ted Cruz next. And he had, he had ones like mirrors don't show my reflection. And, uh, my nickname at Princeton was Fuckface. Uh, so... And then we did the Bernie Sanders edition, where he said things like, Che Guevara used to wear a t-shirt with me on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I combed my hair with a balloon. So, uh, <laughs> so we were waiting until the eve of the Republican convention to finally do 25 Things You Don't Know About Me, Donald Trump. <laughs> would you like to hear? Of course you would. All right. When I masturbate, my tiny hands make my penis look bigger. <laughs> I don't drink alcohol. I cause others to drink alcohol. <laughs> Not only do I read the Bible, the book of Revelations mentions me by name. <laughs> Mar-a-Lago is Spanish for house of douche. <laughs> I saved the box Melania arrived in so I can return her when she turns 50. I never actually believed Obama was born in Kenya because I thought the name of the country was Kanye. 
<laughs> Sometimes late at night, I worry that my obsessive self-aggrandizement and self-promotion are symptoms of inner weakness and a transparent childish impulse that everyone can see. <laughs> I worry they're laughing at how obvious it is that I'm an abandoned, frightened child swirling in a black emptiness. <laughs> but then I tweet shit about my poll numbers and I feel better. <laughs> I cry at movies because they're integrated. <laughs> The original name for Trump Tower was my big shiny penis building. <laughs> I like things made of gold more than every Persian combined. <laughs> I can peel a banana with my feet. <laughs> When I get bored around the office, I make Chris Christie dance around in a diaper. So, uh, uh, Donald Trump had a big week in the New York primary. The conventional wisdom two weeks ago seemed to be, okay, the party is, is getting to the acceptance moment. They've gone through bargaining, anger, <laughs> denial. Now they're going to accept Ted Cruz. And then two weeks later, now we're going to accept Donald Trump. And a lot of the same people who said this guy would be a disaster for the country seem to now be saying, yeah, but we don't want to split apart the party. Aren't they putting party ahead of country? I will leave that to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what else is there, right? Well, yeah, they are. They are. Um, I think they should be against Trump in all circumstances. Uh, on, the, on the original point, which is that uh, after Wisconsin it was going to be Cruz and after New York it's going to be Trump, uh, I don't think either of those are true. I think that there is no such thing at the moment as momentum. I think you have a divided party. I think you have a geographically divided party. There will be uh, states now that Trump wins and states that Cruz wins. I think it's possible neither will win and you're going to have a uh, shit show of a convention in, uh, <laughs> in the summer. But yeah. they're saying that Donald Tr Trump has changed, that they've tamed him. Uh, uh, well, yeah, this <laughs> And, th and that's why they're able to get behind him now. I mean, you know, he's been able to get us to adapt to absurdity, okay? The, that's the, right. The, the mere so fact, true. and that's it's so only a and so scary. The only achievement yes. he has been able to. That's the, a big achievement. The, the, but the fact that he doesn't drop trowel at one, you know, press conference means he should be on Mount Rushmore. Right. It's completely insane right. Right. that we're even having a conversation about him. No, that's, I think his greatest ability is, is his ability to get people to overlook his flaws and to forget. I mean, he had a horrible week, only like, was it two weeks before when he said women should be punished for abortions? He was saying, nuclear weapons? I think everybody should get them. Uh, allies, uh, not so allies, a passing mental patient could have one. <laughs> Yeah, but, terrible, whining. But he needs to get the Republican Party. He has no organization. How's he going to get out the vote if the Republican Party isn't somehow brought around? He sends his new guy, Paul Manafort, out to tell the Republican Party that there he's going to... Who is gonna, this guy, Paul Manafort? Well, I, he's an old-time guy who knows how to run conventions uh, he, and he, organize. He looks like the undead. He's, 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 come, he's come out of the crypt, you see, and he's going to... No, but he knows the party. He knows, he's the establishment. Is right. Is. He, and Trump needs that now in order to, to organize for the campaign, which he hasn't done anything to do. And so they're trying to tell the party that he's going to change, that they're going to fix his personality. These are direct Well, you know what they say? It's he like can't he, do that. How's he going to change his personality? Well, he doesn't have to because they're presenting the scenario that it's a character. You know, uh, uh, it's like Andrew Dice Clay. Sometimes he goes, I'm just being Andrew. I'm not Dice now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look. And then Trump puts on the leather jacket. Hey, hickory dickory dock. Mexican went up the fucking clock. Oh, that's just that's just dice. But that's not really Donald Trump. Let me just say something though. It, it is important for liberals not to get too happy to put him down. Just because Ooh. to put Trump down. I'll tell you why. He can win the presidency. This is, agree. this is the thing. Anything all these, could happen. All these liberals say, he can't possibly win right. because 70% of African Americans hate him. Right. Well, hold on a second. That means, no, no, well, well uh, yeah, uh, that's slow cop, man. Like, that's, <laughs> that's true, but you should, you should be less happy. You should be terrified right. because that means 30% 
might be open to them, which means... Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Loves him. Now look, we live in LA, you can't say that. <laughs> we, we, wanna, we don't wanna, so listen, right. here, but, but listen, seriously, if 30% of African Americans are open to him and half of those vote for him, he's president. In other right. words, African Americans have to vote 90% against him. So right. if 70 percent are against him, we're gonna lose. So people need to calm down and get no people need to freak out. Can I ask about Bring out Maria? She's a journalist and the author of The Confidence Game. Why we fall for it every time. Maria Konnikova. Maria. Hey. Great pleasure to meet you. How you doing? Okay, so as someone who wrote a book called The Confidence Game, we fall for it every time, what did you think when you saw Donald Trump <laughs> standing there in front of a table full of his products? To me, that screamed, there a picture of it screamed confidence man. You know, I saw him and I thought, I'm a psychic. Right. Because, <laughs> because I clearly predicted that this was going to happen. I mean, the moment that they analyzed what his products actually were, they found out that they weren't his products. Not his products. Um, right. He was blatantly lying. And the hallmark of a psycho of a well of, of a psychopath. <laughs> see, see, there you go, Freudian slip. The hallmark of a psychopath, but also the hallmark, hallmark of a con artist, is someone who deceives you for their own ends. So they're trying to convince you to support them, to vote for them in this particular case. Um, and they're doing it by dis by tactics that aren't actually. And, and is you know. this? I mean, am I reading too much into this? But standing there in front of a, a table full of steaks. Now, I don't <laughs> eat steak, but like most people love steak. I thought this was like subliminal advertising kind of stuff. Like people looking at that and going, Trump, steak. <laughs> If I vote Trump, I'll eat steak. <laughs> I mean, they look juicy, you know, steaks yeah. look good. People yeah. are like, mm. And, you know what, think of the voters he's trying to appeal to. Right. So he's actually going for that people common... People who would like to eat steak but can't who, afford it. That's people who right. want to eat steak. Right. Let them eat steak. What? Yeah. It's true. <laughs> and, and I think that we see him trying to get the popular vote. It's the same appeal that he makes all the time, that he is honest, he's a man of the people. He's telling everyone exactly what they want to hear. And he doesn't actually say anything. So that's, that's what confidence artists do. So he's, so he's, a, he's a con man, but he is a good one. He's a very good con. Right. That's why they're called con artists. Right. <laughs> the art of the deal. Right. And I, you make the point that, you know, everyone is saying that uh, Donald Trump has hijacked the party, but a con man doesn't take anything from a person. No. You give it to him Absolutely. willingly. Absolutely, yes. We give them our confidence. Right. The origin of the term confidence game was a man who stole watches, but he never actually stole them. He went up to people on the streets and said, have you confidence in me to lend me your watch until tomorrow? Oh. And people gave them his watch because wow. they gave them they gave him their confidence. And that's exactly what Trump is doing to the party. He isn't asking anyone for anything. People sure. are willingly giving their trust and their confidence. The more I read about this Trump University, <laughs> so the funny. more it sounds like Scientology. It does. People, it, it is. People paying great sums of money to find out a secret that isn't really a secret. And people being coerced yeah. to right. keep giving good ratings. Yeah. We have Scientology where you also have some of the same coercive tactics where people basically get brainwashed into, into saying that Scientology is wonderful. Trump's university's 98% approval ratings. I mean, when we read is about- Is that true? They really do have that high approval rating? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Every single person stands behind that rating. So they have people watching them and calling them. We read stories of people who say that they've been called every single day to change their rating, and finally they say, "Fine, I'm going. I'll change my oh, rating to to 100 percent." Now you call them a psychopath. What? First of I all, what is a psycho? We all throw that term around. I, I'd be hard pressed to define it right now. What is a psychopath? <laughs> well, there's actually a checklist. Here's psychopathy check 
uh, a checklist. Well, I know you have a, t- a checklist for nar- narcissistic I have t- personality. I have, some, I have lots of checklists. Is that a different than a psychopath? <laughs> narcissistic um, it is, but they actually, both both overlap. of those traits, yeah, there's a lot of overlap there. Because here are some of your narcissistic personality <laughs> disorder. Exaggerated sense of self-importance. I don't see that in Donald Trump. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Need for excessive admiration. Again, coming up empty. <laughs> sense of entitlement. Where are you getting this shit from? Uh, lacking empathy? Ha, ah, come on. Uh, believing others to be envious of him. <laughs> Arrogant, haughty, contemptuous behavior or attitude. So, yeah, uh, yeah it sounds like he might be on the edge of that. It, it, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think it applies. But <laughs> a lot of these actually overlap with, um, with psychopathy, like the lack of empathy, like the arrogance and putting right. down of other people. You don't. So he, he does this very funny thing where to his voters, he says really wonderful things to their face. And then behind their back, he says terrible things about the same groups because he ha- makes the same statement. But opposite ways depending on who he's talking to and so you end up seeing these two sides of him where the truth is a really fungible thing um, and there's no such thing as absolute truth the truth is just what's true in the moment to him well wow. and yes. that's both a narcissist and a psychopath and those are two of the dark triad of traits the third is Machiavellianism Ma- yes okay <laughs> and, and I, I don't want to uh, make you psychoanalyze someone you never met too much but uh, last week before they had the nice debate this week they had the nasty debate and they were talking about their penis size they were it seems like he also is a prime candidate for micro penis you know you know I mean somebody is always I'm the best I'm the biggest. I got the greatest. I mean, isn't that obviously someone who does have a small penis? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure that Dr. Freud would have something to say yes, about I, that. I, I'm I, sure I, there's I, a Napoleonic complex okay. equivalent. <laughs> she didn't um, answer the question. <laughs> no, she did not. And we, we'll never know. <laughs> I mean, I wrote an editorial. I wish I had known about yes. your book uh, about Trump called The Confidence Man about two months ago. And I do think oh, he, is, wow. he is a very skillful demagogue. And he's dangerous for that reason, honestly. And we all make fun of him. And I myself thought, oh, he can't sustain this. He'll fade. It can't possibly work. But it, it has worked and, more and than what, I would have thought. I feel like what's so dangerous about him is that we now have seen him for so many months and gotten so used to all this behavior, the incredibly ridiculous bragging and the insulting of everyone who looks at him the wrong way, that it's so baked in the cake now that he's a loon that he can almost, the only, there's nothing he can do that shocks us anymore or people don't go, oh, well, that's Donald Trump for you. And finally, new role since 80 countries in the world have elected a woman leader, but not the United States of us, yet. (laughs) We must admit that when it comes to being progressive, we are often late to the party. And if you need further proof, this Sunday, which is Mother's Day, think about the fact that when my mother was born, women in America could not vote. My mother. Not some far distant relative I discovered on Ancestry.com. My mother, who was born in 1919, the year before women got the vote. Of course, by the time she had me in 1956, things for women had really changed. (laughs) How much? I'll leave that to Rex Harrison to explain. He played Professor Henry Higgins when My Fair Lady opened on Broadway in 1956. Hit it, Rex. Rational. That's all there is to that. Their heads are full of cotton hay and rags. They're nothing but exasperating, irritating, vacillating, calculating, agitating, maddening, and infuriating hags. <laughs> yeah. And he's the hero. <laughs> But that was how women were viewed in the 1950s. Irrational, pouty, vain, thin-skinned, hysterical, and just not that bright. Does that sound like anyone we know today? (laughs) Who? Who? Oh. Yes, Donald Trump, who says that if Hillary Clinton was a man, she wouldn't get 5% of the vote. And if Trump was a man, he'd stop whining like a little bitch. (laughs) 
This is a guy who actually brags about his prowess at whining. I am a whiner, and I'm a whiner, and I keep whining and whining until I win. <laughs> yes, it's the I Love Lucy school of diplomacy. <laughs> Does anyone fit the stereotypical 50s description of a woman better than Donald Trump? Any cringe-inducing line they ever said about a secretary on Mad Men is true about Trump. And yet, he's the one with the penis. <laughs> and we know that because if you make fun of it, he'll be up all night tweeting about how great it is. <laughs> he accuses Megyn Kelly of being menstrual, but for him, that time of the month is always. <laughs> Has there anyone ever been anyone more thin-skinned? I made a joke about his father being an orangutan once, <laughs> and he marched into court with his birth certificate and sued me because he's a whiny little bitch. And if he's not suing you... <laughs> if he's not suing you, he's threatening to sue you or demanding an apology or threatening to spill the beans. He did that a few months ago when he was still battling Ted Cruz and someone posted a picture of his wife he didn't like, so he tweeted he'd spill the beans about Ted's wife and then literally told the press, he started it. <laughs> Just like Teddy Roosevelt would do. Yes, a billionaire and a United States senator in the girl's shower throwing tampons at Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope this man gets elected so the world respects us again. And I mean this in no way to disparage vaginas, but <laughs> what a pussy. <laughs> I mean, who gets more hysterical than Lady Donald Trump seeing Mexican rapists everywhere? Oh, my salts, my salts, we, we must build a wall, a giant wall, and bat all the Muslims. <laughs> He makes Lindsey Graham look like Vin Diesel. <laughs> this isn't presidential, it's Glenn Close boiling the rabbit. <laughs> and like the daffy, typical housewife of the 50s, Lady Trump is the one who can't balance a checkbook. Trump Airlines, Trump Casinos, Trump University, Trump Stakes. He's got the Midas touch of every time Midas touched something, it exploded. <laughs> I could... I could go on, but instead I'd like to turn it back over to Rex Harrison to sum it all up. Why is thinking something women never do? And why is logic never even tried? Straightening up their hair is all they ever do. Why don't they straighten up the mess that's inside? So... <laughs> so never forget, Lady Trump, that Hillary Clinton was born a woman, but you chose to live your life as a... <laughs> say it with me, won't you? Whiny little bitch. <laughs> Which is why if Hillary is the Democratic nominee, I'll be voting for the only one who has balls. So let me ask about one question about Trump. He certainly gets all the press. We're not going to give him that much. But I, I hear a lot of people say, you know, it's just a bubble. You know, it's going to go away just the way Herman Cain and Michelle Bachman and all these people did. But, you know, you kids are a little young to remember. But that's what they said about Ronald Reagan. I remember when he, I was 12 years old in 1968 when he first floated the bubble of running and it was a joke. Oh, come on. He had a stupid television show. He's divorced. He avoided combat. He's got weird hair and crazy face paint. This guy will never. So for all those people who say Donald Trump could not go all the way, I don't think they're right. They didn't say he would get this far. And obviously, I don't know what the results are from last night, but Fox tried to put a stake in him, and I don't think they did. 
I agree with you completely. Crazy to dismiss his chances to be the Republican nominee. When you have 17 candidates in the race, he's polling at 25 percent right now. He may collapse, but he may not. And you can certainly be the Republican nominee getting 25, 26, 27 percent of the vote. And his message is powerful, which is our leaders in Washington are incompetent. The country is falling apart. I'm going to fix it and make America great again. He's not talking about policies. But, a lot of what he says is nonsense talk, but he is saying, <laughs> he is saying things. Steve, listen, listen, to listen, 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 listen. He is saying, other than the fact saying, that he has he no saying, policies, he is saying out loud what millions but, of people across this country are screaming at their television sets yeah. every night. And the notion he can't win, I think, is dead wrong. But like, like, take for example what he said about Obamacare. I will repeal it and replace it with something terrific. Yeah. Right. <laughs> is that the, the, the best, not, that the best, is the best way to describe something it, terrific? The best way to describe his rhetoric and policy it has the form and substance of fog. There is simply no there there. There's no. Do, Nothing real about this. But do the people between, care? I, I, I think this. I think this is wearing thin. I thought last night was the beginning of the pro process of decoupling ourselves from him. And I think once the media starts focusing on the other candidates, that's when he begins to shrink. And I just see that as an inevitable. Respecting your example of Reagan, this is no Reagan, and I'm not here celebrating Reagan. But there were a little more principles attached to Reagan's approach uh, to governing. Yeah, he was a little better than something terrific. Here's what he has. <laughs> Here's what he has, and I admit he'd have a better chance of going all the way if he had hair like yours, possibly. <laughs> but he is, it's, Dream on, it's his lady. message. <laughs> I'm saying, there is, uh, there is, we, so we you know. up here. When's the last time you saw James Carville's hair? I, I like mean, that I know. hair. We know, we know. I like that hair. It's been a long time. <laughs> Listen, here's what he has that speaks to Steve's point. He, and which has been driving conservatives crazy, right wing nuts like me for it, two cycles now he has confidence and he's not defensive and he doesn't accept the premise of the question and conservatives want somebody who's going to stand up for what we believe in and he's if he's at least standing up for the principles and why Wait, there was, for what principles he's the not principles defensive? are that there there's a core competence of government that is missing yeah. and i know that the government can work i'm not anti-government republicans are anti-government we've made new orleans work you made san francisco work yeah. Federalism works. The, the federal government is not working. But, but to his point earlier, um, it does seem like they don't have any specifics or they do not want to deal with reality. It seems like Who the difference they? in the, the Republicans. It looks like the Democrats at least deal with reality, whereas the Rep and look in the mirror sometimes and ask you to as a country, whereas everything with the Republicans is it's the fault of China. Mexico and Iran, and of course, lazy takers who uh, use their welfare money to buy drugs. Well, I think you saw, yeah. I think you saw any one of a number of Republican candidates last night with an